Hi guys, welcome back to Caterpillar Cross Stitch. My name is Sean and welcome to the last part of the cross stitch in school. Over the last couple of months, you have been learning how to cross stitch and today we are going to be fully finishing our cross stitching piece into a bookmark. If you're new to the channel, then we would love for you to click on that red subscribe button and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future uploads. If this is your first time to the cross stitching school, then please do go back to the first part so that you get to experience the full series helping you along on your cross stitching journey. Now Sally designed a brand new design for the cross stitching school, however this pattern is available for anybody who has signed up to the VIP Stitch Club, which we will leave down below in the description box. All you need to do is enter your email address and you will gain access to the freebie designs that Sally has created. Now if you want to wash your bookmark before you fully finish it, then we will leave down below a link to an excellent video that Sally has here available on Caterpillar Cross Stitch YouTube. It covers everything you need to know and it's really easy to follow. So I'd recommend going and checking that out. But let's take a look at how to iron our bookmarks. For ironing our piece, you will need a towel or a cloth just to lay over the top of our cross stitch piece. And you'll need an iron to be on quite a high temperature. Now our fabric is quite small. However, if you have a large piece of fabric, you will need two towels, one to lay on the bottom and one to lay over the top of your cross stitch. Make sure your towel lays nice and flat before you start to move the iron over your fabric. Now, if you do have some harsh creases after ironing over the towel, then you can iron directly onto the fabric, but just make sure that you iron on the back side of the cross stitch. And I would just turn the temperature down, just watch it closely. I would do this as a last resort for those stubborn creases. So now that our bookmark is ready for finishing, let's take a look at the things that we're going to need in order to fully finish our bookmark. Before assembling our bookmark, we need to check for any dangling threads or any threads that are sitting outside of the cross stitches. As we mentioned in part three, we want to avoid any shadows being formed. So taking my cross stitch scissors, I'm just going to trim off any spare thread, making sure to be careful that I don't cut any of the stitches. Once happy that everything is looking neat and tidy, we can now move on to what tools we will need to form our bookmark. First, we have our sticky back felt, which we will use to give our bookmarks that finished look. We then, of course, have our cross stitch piece. We will need a ruler to help with measuring. We will also need a pencil or some kind of thin marker. And we also need to have a pair of craft scissors. You'll also need your cross stitching scissors if you don't want to cut your cross stitching fabric with your craft scissors. Using the ruler, I'm now going to measure our cross stitch piece, taking into account the overall finished size. I'm going to cut out a piece of sticky felt measuring at eight inches by two inches.
Taking the ruler, I'm now going to trim off the excess fabric we don't need on either sides of our bookworm. I'm going to leave about an inch on either sides to allow me to have enough fabric to fold in the end pieces, giving our bookmark a clean edge. Once my bookmark is trimmed, I'm now going to place it on top of the felt, keeping the paper on the sticky side to allow me to get the bookmark in position. I'm going to fold each side to see if we need to trim any more of the fabric or the felt. I'm going to leave a couple of squares of fabric on either side and will run my finger over the edges to help keep the shape I want my bookmark to have when placing it down on the sticky felt. As you can see, there is some excess felt, so I'm going to use my craft scissors to trim off what I don't need and we'll place the bookmark on top of the felt for one last check before we reveal the sticky side. Now that our sticky felt is the right size, I'm now going to begin peeling back the paper to reveal the sticky side we're going to use to secure our bookmark in place. To keep it manageable, I'm going to reveal the sticky side in sections. First, I'm going to secure the folded edge and will gradually pull the paper on the back of the felt, working my way down the back of the cross stitching piece, making sure it's in the center. Now you can also add some card in between the felt and the cross stitch piece if you wanted to give the bookmark a bit more structure. Folding in the last side of our cross stitch and pressing down on the felt to make sure everything is secure, we now have our finished bookmark ready to use in our favourite book or to give as a gift. So that concludes the last part of the cross stitching school. I hope you have enjoyed this series and have found it really useful to get you onto your cross stitching journey. If you have enjoyed this series, then please do give this video a like. And if you do have any questions, then make sure to leave them down below in the comment section where a member of the Caterpillar cross stitch team will be able to help. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Cross Stitching School. I really do hope that you have found it useful. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.